Uh, the next panelist is uh, Trustee uh, Pearl Chang. She's uh, one of my colleagues on the Foothill Nianza College Board. She was recently unanimously appointed to the board after our uh, Honorable pa Paul Fong got on the assembly, was uh, uh, elected into the assembly. And so unanimously, she is now my colleague, and I'm very proud to have her as part of one of these panelists. Uh, Pearl has a long history of leadership and management skills. She's, uh, for last eight years, she was uh, on the Cupertino School Board. And she's also uh, was president of the School Board's Association. So without further ado, Pearl, please come and talk a little bit about yourself. I'm very proud to have her here. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here and wonderful to see this, this audience on a wonderful Sunday afternoon here in the heart of Cupertino. I want to thank the sponsoring organizations for pulling this uh, event together as we celebrate the accomplishments of, accomplishments of women internationally. Um, and I'm pleased to be part of this esteemed panel. As the topic for this panel discussion is called Expressions in Art, let me just start um, with a simple question around the room and with this audience. How many are, are artists at heart? How many would call themselves artists at heart in the work that you do daily and some of the hobbies and, and the fun things that you pursue? Very good, yeah, many of us, I would say. How many also in this room are either trained in the sciences or technology fields, uh, let's say architecture, even fashion design, computer <coughs> science, um, the natural sciences, engineering, and maybe some research areas? How many would fit into that? I would say we have, again, a good blending of both of those areas. Let me just um, start with, uh, in ancient Greece, the word for art is called techne. And from that word, I believe, I have read that we have gotten the words technique and technology, which are terms that we apply to both the scientific and artistic endeavors. And I believe in a, in a number of, of the hands that were raised, we actually blend a, a number of those um, practices and perceptions and views of the world in our uh, professional lives as well as our, our personal hobbies and practices. As you heard, my name is Pearl Chang, and I have um, been trained in the technical field, so I would actually affiliate with a number of the hands that went up with my second question. But as a child also, I very much was, was an artist at heart, um, enjoyed drawing, enjoyed painting, and was very much encouraged um, in, in expression through art as a young girl. Then, you heard, I, I spent a number of uh, years at NASA. I actually did pursue as a young girl the area of, of science and mathematics, but never really giving up my interest and my love of science. And I have been able to then spend time, I spent a, uh, 19 years with a career at NASA as a design engineer and a manager and then a line manager there, where I worked with astronauts and scientists and researchers to blend my, my field of study, which was mechanical and biomedical engineering, to design and build spaceflight hardware uh, to, to work on um, the effects, to understand the effects of gravity on the living systems and human body in, in space. And so I had an opportunity, my studio was of course the laboratory at that time as I blended um, experimental design with aesthetic design and um, laboratory and research. Then after the 19 years there, uh, my story continues, and I was raising young children in this community of Cupertino, and was then pulled with, with my skills from the workplace, as well as my volunteer efforts in the community, was pulled to move into policy work and work on behalf of children and youth in the community. And as you heard then, I did join the Cupertino Union School District Board of Education, Cupertino is one of 33 school districts in Santa Clara County, and um, Cupertino District is the third largest of the school districts in Santa Clara County. So I have, I have spent a number of years now working on behalf of ensuring that we have strong opportunities for our young people and um, for children as they move into uh, positions of responsibility in the community. Just recently, as you heard, I have joined the Foothill De Anza School Board, so at that level, providing um, post-graduate or post-secondary opportunities for high school graduates, <coughs> looking at, again, opportunities for, for young people to move into the workplace and to expand their opportunities in the community. 
And then I have also spent three years as a program manager with the United Way. So again, working on education initiatives and helping to, to ensure that our children and youth are prepared for the future. Let me just, um, and in all of that time, let me just say, um, it has been important to really um, continue to overlap, I think, the quantitative uh, experiences that I had as an engineer and manager, as well as the more um, uh, world of perception and expression and exploration of, of um, the depths of understanding of, of human nature and, and the human existence. So again, the combination of art and science. Let me just raise um, some topics for you to think about where we see science meeting art. And let me just give you some of these things um, to think about. The early pyramids, from microscopes to large-scale sculptures, bringing the lost world of dinosaurs to life, Manjul Bhargava, the Indian artist of music and math, math and the Mona Lisa, the founding artist of computer science, electronic music, Software helps singers find perfect pitch. What do you see and what do you perceive as, as you hear these, these different phrases? These are actually um, stories and commentaries that the National Public Radio produced um, as they explored the intersection of art and technology and science. And this was a series of presentations on scientists and artists and those that blended science and art in 2005. And so I would encourage you, if you're interested, to pursue and hear some of those uh, personal stories. Technology needs art, I believe, is also an important premise. And this was an area that um, I believed in as I was a design engineer at NASA. I needed to put together teams of people, researchers, scientists, designers, craftspeople from, who were good at working with their hands and could put together models and simulation items together and we crafted um, experiments for the space shuttle. What was very important is that we took and built these, these uh, designs together. We tested them, we worked human interfaces with them, we checked the efficiencies and the operation, and we had to also ensure that we were meeting the specific goals of the experiments. My studios, again at that time, included not only the laboratory in, in a regular laboratory as you might envision, a biological or a chemical laboratory, but I also took them on, on um, simulated zero gravity flights. So I would actually uh, help outfit a KC-135, this is a medium scale airplane, and I would help then um, put some of my experimental hardware on this experimental aircraft, and we would fly what was called parabolic flights which would then provide zero gravity for short periods of time that would help us simulate the effects of weightlessness and then allow us to do some quick manipulations with our designs. So our studio at that time, again, coupled designers, artists, and engineers as we had to ensure the operation of, of our hardware with astronauts in mind. This is something that they call, these aircrafts, the KC-135s, they term something lovingly, the vomit comet. And you can maybe imagine, this is where we would go into numerous um, zero uh, gravity parabola flights over and over, simulating 3G, multiple G, as you then allow to free fall into zero gravity, multiple G, and then zero gravity. And that was our, our experimental aircraft to test equipment for um, the space shuttle and space station. And so I just tell you that because, again, it's not so much that things are within laboratories as we know them today, and perhaps for, again, the artists that are in the audience, it's, it's similar to a studio because, again, we are breaking the bounds of, of our thinking of um, science as we know it and blending and building the aesthetic, blending and building the performances that we need in various environments. And so that was a wonderful career that I had uh, at NASA and uh, a number of fun things still going going on with them. Let me just um, also talk about the blending of art and science in education. As you heard, that is where I have spent a number of my years now with school boards and board of trustees working on behalf of education. And again, here is an area that I think the intersection and expression of art through science or expression of science through art is extremely important. 
And so many of us, as we put together um, curriculum, as we look at the instruction and opportunities for our young people and our children in our schools, we have worked very hard to make sure that we protect our classes, music classes, physical education classes, that those are just as important as the history, language arts, mathematics uh, teaching that we have as well in the classroom. And so again, with the, the title of this panel, Expressions in Art, I truly see that that blends many, in many, many ways. I see it blending in, in the different lives here of people in the audience and I think it is something that we will be upholding together from all of our various uh, communities that we represent. So thank you for having